Hello, I'm Russ, and welcome to this, the fourth in CAD-ARN series of kit videos. In this video, we're going to look at this DSLR camera, the Canon EOS 700D. DSLRs like the 700D are designed primarily for taking digital photographs, but they can also be used to shoot high-definition footage. These two functions require that you handle the camera in quite different ways, but most of the basic operations are the same. So I'm going to talk to you about both functions in this video, starting with photography. Although the 700D is an entry-level DSLR, it has all the advanced features that you'd expect on a camera like this. You can get very in-depth in the way that you use it, but in the auto it's easy enough for a complete beginner. And because it's entry-level, Canon does what it can to help you learn as you use the camera, giving you the information that you need on the LCD's monitor at every step. I'm not going to be able to cover everything the camera has to offer in this video, and although I'll talk about some technical things, I'm not interested in looking under the bonnet. My aim is to cover the basics of how to use the camera, giving you the confidence to start shooting, as well as the knowledge you need to begin exploring the advanced features. To start things off, let's take a look at see what the camera comes with. As you can see here, we've got the lens attached to the camera already. In the bottom of the camera, we've got this battery here, and an SD card here in the side of the camera, which is where we record all our video and still photos to. If I bring the bag up now, we can have a look and see what else we get inside there make a bit of room. Okay, so first off we've got a spare battery which is essential for when you're shooting on a DSLR. We've also got the charger for the battery. There's a case for the SD card when you take the SD card out of the camera. We've got this body cap and lens cap which are for when you take the lens off the camera. Then we've got these two filters, that's a UV filter, and we also have a polarising filter. There's a USB cable so that you can attach the camera to your computer to move your files over. There's a remote which enables you to control the camera remotely, and a little case for that. Okay, we've also got this Rode VideoMic Pro. Now this doesn't come boxed with the Canon camera, it's an additional piece of sound kit that's provided with the kit um, by Cadarn. And then you've also got some spare bungee cords which are for this suspension cradle here. You've also got this manual and a couple of CDs provided by Canon. And finally, we've got a lens cloth, which is essential for looking after and cleaning your lens. Right, that's all the kit that comes in the bag. I'm going to show you how to set up the camera now, so let's clear a few things away. Right, I'm going to leave a few things here on the table now and put the bag out of the way. As is typical with DSLR cameras, the lens on the 700D is interchangeable and comes off. You just press this down and it should twist quite easily. You shouldn't have to force anything with the DSLR lenses. They should just come off quite smoothly. Once you've pressed it and twisted it, just take it off. And inside you'll see that there's a mirror and that's what allows you to see through the viewfinder. When you take a shot, that lifts up and behind that you've got the sensor and the shutter. So it's best to try and avoid touching anything inside the camera just to save getting it dirty or getting dust in there. And the same goes for the lens. Try not to touch the glass on the inside of the lens. Best thing to do is to, when you're taking the lens off, keep the body pointing down so there's no dust going in. And as soon as it's off, cover up both parts with the body cap and the lens cap. As there aren't any other lenses supplied with the kit, it's best to keep the lens on the camera. So if I just put that back on now, take the lens cap off and the body cap off. To get the lens on, you need to take this white square here and this white square here and align them up. The red dot is for another range of lenses supplied by Canon. That's the EF lenses, but we don't need to worry about that just yet. So if we get the white dots lined up, and then you should be able to twist that smoothly until it clicks into place. When you're not using the camera, remember to always keep the end of the lens covered with a lens cap like this one, and that's to prevent the glass from getting dirty or scratched. For added protection, some people like to use a UV filter like this one here. When you put the filter on, you need to make sure that both the lens and the filter are clean, as any dust that's caught between them or any smudges might show up in your photos. If you can, blow off any dust, ideally with a dust blower, but if you haven't got a dust blower, just blow it with your mouth like this. 
and that should get any dust off it. If you do find that you need to clean it more, just use a lens cloth like this. You want to make sure that you use a proper lens cloth. Um, other materials like your t-shirt or a, a paper towel might have coarse materials which could scratch the glass. So make sure that you use a proper lens cloth. So if I clean this lens now, first off you want to take off the lens cap and then what you want to do is wipe the lens in circular motions like so. And the reason you do it in circular motions is that if you do happen to get a piece of grit or something on there and it does scratch, then it won't show up as much if it's wiped in a circular motion. Okay, that looks clean. If I get the UV filter now and that just screws on like that. So that should screw on until it's tight. And then if you put the lens cap on, that should fit on still quite snugly. There you go. It's not essential these days that you use a UV filter. They, lenses really don't need them and they can, on rare occasions, create minor abnormalities in your image. However, it does add an extra layer of protection, so it's really up to you if you want to use one or not. Okay, next let's look at the battery. It goes in here at the bottom of the camera. You'll see that there says bat open. I'll just show it to that camera there. And what you need to do is take your nail and just pop that door open by pressing the lever in. And then inside you'll see a white battery and this grey lever here. If you press this grey lever, let's just get this strap out of the way. If you press this grey lever, the battery will pop out. So if I take that out, you can see that there's these contacts here. When you're putting the battery back in, you want to make sure that the contacts are lined up with the contacts on the inside of the, the camera body. If you put it in the wrong way, I'll just demonstrate that now, what you'll find is that the battery won't slot into position. So let's put that the right way. Okay, always remember when you've got the battery in, like that, to make sure that you close the battery door properly until it clicks into position. Right, I'm going to take the battery out again now, so if I click that out and then press that, take that out, put the battery there and put the camera to one side. I want to show you now how to charge the battery. So if I get the battery charger, you've got two parts to that. You've got the main body of the charger and then the mains power adapter. If you take the battery and you line these contacts up with these contacts here, just show that camera. So they slot into position like so. And then if you take the end of the mains power adapter and plug that into the charge unit, like so. And then when you plug this end into the mains, this orange light here will light up where it says charge. And then when the battery's fully charged, it will go out there and this light here will light green where it says full. And it takes about two hours to get a completely fully charged battery when the battery was originally completely flat. And how long the battery lasts very much depends on how you're using the camera and where because batteries don't work as well in cold conditions. If you're taking photos you'll get about 400 shots before you need to charge your battery again. Video has a bigger drain on power. If you're shooting continually you'll get about 90 minutes which isn't very long so it's essential that you have a spare battery to hand. Make sure the spare is a proper Canon battery though, other brands won't last as long and can be unreliable. Okay, so if I put the battery back in the camera now, click it open, pop the battery in until it slots in and then close that. Now there's only one more thing that you need for this camera before you can start to shoot and that's something to record your photos and your video clips onto, your storage medium. As I already mentioned, the 700D uses SD cards and they slot into the side of the camera here, where you can see card open written on the side. It's best not to open the cover or take the card out when the camera is switched on, and this is to make sure that you don't corrupt any of the digital files that you've got stored on the card. So turn the camera off before opening the slot and removing the SD card is a really good habit to get into. But the main thing that you need to remember is to never open the cover or remove the card when this light here is flashing red. When it's flashing, the card is being accessed by the camera and interrupting that will lead to problems. The camera isn't turned on right now, so we can safely open the cover up. If you slide it back, it'll click open. And then if you lift that flap up, you'll see there's an SD card in there. If we press in on the SD card, it'll pop out. And then if I take that out, let's close that and put the camera down. So that's the SD card there. The 700D can take standard SD cards as well as high capacity and extended capacity SD cards. 
The type of card that you use depends very much on what you want to do with the camera. If you want to shoot video, you're going to need a fast card with a large storage capacity like the one that we've got here, which is a 64 gig card and has a write speed of 30 megabits per second. A card of this size will fit thousands of large, high quality JPEG photos and about three and a half hours of HD video footage. SD cards have a useful function I just want to tell you about quickly. You can lock them using this small yellow tab here on the side. So you just push it down to lock it, like so. Once locked, you won't be able to delete any of the files from the card. You also won't be able to write any more photos or video clips, and you won't be able to format the card over. But you will be able to view the files and copy them to your computer. Just remember to flick the tab up back to the unlock position, like so, when you've backed up all your files and you're ready to use the card again. To put the card back in, make sure that you've got the card facing the right way. So if I open this up here, you'll see there's a small little diagram just there, indicating which way it needs to go. So you press it in until it clicks. If the card doesn't go in easily, then you've probably got it the wrong way around, so just try it the opposite way. As I've said before, you never want to force anything with the camera. So those are the basic three things that you need to set the camera up before using it. The lens, the battery and the SD card.